part of the message. He w I seem to have found it. General Kenobi, years ago you served my father in the Clone Wars. The hologram of Princess Leia that appeared in A New Hope is, I think, one of the more memorable sequences in that movie. And the idea of having holograms that you could send as messages in that way has always been kind of fascinating to me. So when I saw that Desert Octopus had released a 3D printable model that you could turn into a an LED lamp, I was very interested and I decided I would print it. So here's the resin version. Obviously I did these two parts in transparent blue and then this one just in gray because I'm going to be painting this. I think the layout portion of the statue or the lamp just came out extremely well in the resin. Just look at that. It's beautiful and nicely transparent too. You can see right through it. So this is printed solid, so it's relatively heavy. I don't normally print resin prints completely solid like this because it uses a lot of resin and sometimes it can be a little bit too heavy even just for the printing process to go correctly, but uh, I thought the only real re way that you're going to get this to look so absolutely perfect like this is to do it solid instead of having, for example, this be hollow in the in the inside. Uh, that would mean that you'd probably going to have to have supports, support material on the inside. You'd also have to, you know, have that gap that, uh, you know, that hole in the inside that would be visible from the outside and it would just, it would just not look as good. And so, yep, I decided to bite the bullet and print this completely solid. I'm glad that I did. I also wanted to show you this part, which similarly was printed solid. Now resin, at least in my experience, resin parts are kind of not that great for getting exact uh, dimensions and things, getting things to fit exactly. So you can see here on this one in particular, it's not flat on the bottom at all. It's kind of wavy. And for the figure as well, there's a little cutout here where the figure is supposed to go, and it still does not quite fit in there properly, even though I've taken a file and tried to kind of massage it a little bit. It's good enough. I can get it in there if I kind of shove it in there, <laughs> but, uh, you know, that that's one downside with the resin. At least in my experience, it's not great for precise fit of parts and things. Of course, this is the base, and as you may be able to tell, this is a an altered version of the original Desert Octopus design because I didn't have an LED lamp that would fit very well with that design. And instead I had, I found this one. It's kind of meant for an under cabinet lighting solution, I guess. But uh, I decided I would just, you know, alter the design so that it would fit up here like this. Uh, it's a little bit loose still, but it's, it's fine. I'm gonna glue it in there like that with a little hot glue, I think. And it'll, I think, look pretty good. And then I have also, I added this little cutout for the cord so that it would go out the back. I'm going to be painting this base, just uh, a simple kind of silver color scheme. Basically, I'll just spray paint it black and then spray paint some metallic silver on top of that and maybe do a little weathering or something. I haven't quite decided how I'm going to do it, but uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and get that done and then we can assemble this and see what it looks like lit up. So here's what the base looks like with the light installed. I'm really actually pretty pleased with how this matches. We have the aluminum of the LED with the chrome on the base that I painted. It looks pretty good, I think. Uh, this comes with a wired remote that allows you to turn it on and off and make some adjustments. So if you just tap it once, it'll turn on the light. Tap it again, it'll make it the warm version of the light, which is more yellow. And then there's sort of a, I guess, a daylight version that combines the white and the yellow if you tap it again. I'm just going to be using the first version, I think, this one here. Uh, you can also adjust the brightness. Thankfully, I, when I first got it, it was set to this very low level here, and I didn't think it was nearly 
bright enough, uh, you can adjust it so that it goes much higher just by tapping and holding on this. So anyway, this is what I'm going to be using here. Uh, of course, we're going to be putting the sort of hologram effect portion on there. And then Leia herself. I'm going to be using, I think, some epoxy glue to attach this because this is not perfectly flat and I kind of want to fill up the gap between here. So we'll try that and uh, we'll see how it looks together. Since this part is a pretty tight fit, I decided I should use super glue just to make it, you know, so that it would not have any extra glue kind of taking up the space and so forth. Also, I was worried that maybe the epoxy would yellow over time and that would affect the color. So, let's go with this. And here we have the finished lamp. And I'm really pleased with how it turned out, especially this base was actually a lot better than I thought it might be. This, uh, this chrome paint that I used actually has a very nice reflective effect, as you can probably tell. And I uh, didn't really feel the need to add any weathering or anything like that. I didn't, having just the plain silver looks really nice in this case. And of course the resin parts themselves look amazing. All that I really have left to do is to turn the lamp on. Of course if I do it with these very bright shooting lights on, you're not really going to be able to see much. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the lights off first, and then we'll turn on the LED in the base. There it is. Now it is brighter significantly at the bottom than at the top, although I like that in some sense because it gives it some variation and makes it look maybe a little more hologram-like. Uh, in any case, it does light up very nicely. You know, it's I'm in a completely dark room at the moment, but I can see the area around me thanks to the lamp, so I do think it'll work. It'll function as a sort of accent lamp. It's not going to be good enough to light up an entire room, of course, but uh, still. So this is pretty much what I had in mind when I started this project. I'm really happy with how this resin version turned out. It looks great. But when I've done similar things in the past, including this hologram Jabba right here, or like a hologram Luke figure, People have suggested to me that I might want to try actually printing them in filament to see if that would make it look more like a hologram, because as you are probably aware in Star Wars, holograms often have kind of a liney look to them. They're not perfectly smooth. Uh, the Leia hologram being the first one that they did, uh, not quite the same as some of the later ones we saw in different Star Wars media, but yeah, I mean, that's seemed like a reasonable suggestion. So I decided I would make a filament version of this lamp as well. Uh, I did a lot of experimenting with different approaches and different kinds of filament. Uh, unfortunately, I was not able to find a light blue transparent filament of any kind. The only transparent blue filaments I could find on Amazon anyway were dark blue and didn't seem like they would really be great for this hologram. So I had to try some other things and none of them really work the way that I hope that they would, uh, I guess, but still it'll be interesting to take a look at. Um, so first of all, I did make a base, a filament base, using, this actually came in in a pack of two, so I had another one of these LED lamps, and I just printed it uh, in the same way, except in filament. So we've got the base, but, uh, you know, it occurred to me that because I'm using filament, I could probably make it a little bit bigger, I could use one of my larger filament printers, so I did try printing off the 35 centimeter tall version of the model that uh, Desert Octopus provided, as well as the 25 uh, centimeter version. And I think this would be probably the size, more or less, that the actual hologram would be in real life. You know, just sort of extrapolating from how big it is relative to the people on screen. Uh, for this, I used a filament that goes kind of from a light blue to an almost white color. Uh, you can't see it as well in this particular print as you can in some of the other ones I'm going to show you, but uh, it's an interesting effect. I was hoping it would be a little more transparent than it ended up being, so this is not great for a lamp, 
but uh, it looks good. This is a 0.32 millimeter layer height, so it's the chunkiest layer height I would normally consider using for printing, but honestly, I'm not really sure you can see the lines that well. Maybe it would be different on a uh, transparent one. We're going to take a look at that in a minute, but yeah, I, I'm not sure how hologrammy this really looks, but it's a nice print and a uh, nice size too. I actually did another one of these. Here you can see the gradation a little bit better, perhaps. And I tried uh, using the airbrush to just kind of paint on the details of her hair and skin, because in the close-ups of A New Hope, you can see, you know, some color there as opposed to it being all blue. Honestly, this didn't really turn out that well, but it was, you know, interesting to try. From a distance, it looks kind of cool. So anyway, after that, I decided I would move on to uh, smaller versions so that I would have one that would be directly comparable to what I did for the resin version. So I did do one in that same gradiated filament and this one I decided I would just go all in, make it as chunky as I could possibly make it. This is with a one millimeter nozzle which is a lot bigger than the 0.4 millimeter nozzle that we typically use on uh, printers. And so that allowed me to go all the way up to 0.8 millimeters layer height. Each one of these layers is nearly one millimeter tall. Um, and I think you can probably tell just how, how chunky that is. Looks a little bit low poly almost, or low res, right? Uh, not a bad look. I kind of like it. And I also like the way the, uh, the gradations show up in this print. So, you know, I wouldn't call this a success exactly, but um, it was interesting to see how that turned out. Well, I, you know, tell you what, let me let me go ahead and put this on the on the lamp while we have it here, just to show you how it looks lit up. I'll go ahead and turn on the lights here. So you know, it's not really that bad of an effect, but it doesn't look quite as good as the resin, in my opinion. I decided to go ahead and make some actual transparent ones, as I mentioned. Uh, the only thing I had was this kind of bluish green, which is not a fantastic match, but it does it does kind of work. Uh, what I decided here was to use a single perimeter, so it's very thin walled print, and you can see, you know, you can kind of look through it. It's transparent in that sense. And even though this is not a perfect print, because there's some voids and places where things got skipped, it actually kind of works for the uh, hologram look, I thought. It was actually pretty cool looking. So if I ever do get the appropriate color of light blue filament, I'd like to try this again. Just try printing it like that. Let's try uh, lighting this up as well. I think you can tell that it does work considerably better. It gets higher up here. The light seems to go all the way to the top, more so than it would with this one. Even though these are both hollow prints, um, this is a lot thinner, and of course the filament itself is much more transparent. I also did, this is more of a, a normal print with, uh, I don't know, two or three perimeters, so it's a lot more sturdy. Still, honestly, didn't print that well. The filament I was using is kind of old, so I'm not sure if that was the reason, but if you look closely, you can see there's a lot of kind of weird defects in it. And then we have uh, this one as well, which I used. I ended up, this is actually the first one I printed, ended up using the wrong settings on my printer, but I thought it came out really cool looking in some sense because it's very transparent and you have a lot of voids and things that do look kind of appropriate for a hologram. So, uh, again, not sure I would actually turn this into a lamp or not, but it was an interesting experiment. Finally, I decided, oh, you know what, I forgot, I did print the, uh, 
the aura part there in this color of filament. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll try the, the really thin one on here just to see what it looks like. Finally, I decided I would get some glow-in-the-dark filament. And that's what you see here. This is actually blue glow-in-the-dark that, you know, it looks white under normal lighting conditions, but if you charge it up, especially if you use, say, a, uh, a UV light for two or three minutes or something like that to charge it up, it glows pretty brightly. So I thought maybe I wouldn't even need to use the LED portion, and you could just have this kind of sitting in the corner of your room glowing, you know, after it's been charged up during the day. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. Um, I do have also the the Aura section, so I'm going to turn off the LED light, and we'll see what it looks like. All right, I just came back from charging these up with my UV curing station. So we're gonna put this on here without any kind of LED underneath it and see what it looks like in the dark. This is actually pretty hard to photograph. Uh, if I try to take it as normal video, it just is almost invisible, which is not what it looks like in real life. But if I take a photo, it ends up being kind of a long exposure and it looks considerably brighter, as you see here, than it does in real life. It's somewhere in between, you know, those two things. But it does look pretty cool in person, I'll have to say. The only thing I don't really know is I haven't used this filament enough to know if just having it sit around sort of in ambient light during the daytime would be enough to have it glow noticeably during the night, or if you have to intentionally charge it up in a UV chamber like I did to really have it uh, last. So that's about it for this project. Uh, as I said, quite happy with how the resin versions turned out. Less happy with the filament versions, but it was fun to print all these layers and do various, uh, you know, settings and approaches and things like that. Maybe if I do find an appropriate light blue transparent filament in the future, I'll try it again. Uh, if you are interested in printing this yourself, you can check out the model on Colts 3D. Desert Octopus is making it available there for sale. And even if you don't have a 3D printer, I imagine this is the kind of thing that people who sell 3D prints will jump on because it's a relatively easy thing to print and make. So uh, maybe, you know, keep an eye out on places like Etsy. Well, that's about it for today. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you again soon. As always, this was brought to you by my patrons from Patreon, including Angelica Brady, Jesper Murtu, and the rest of my Palace VIPs. Thanks very much for your support, everyone. If you'd like to help support the channel as well, you can click the link in the video description to find out more about how you can do so for as little as $1 a month.